ever feel like, uh, you're totally on a roll, brain bursting with ideas, and then bam, it's like you hit a wall. Yeah. Like something's holding you back from actually, you know, doing the thing. Well, today's deep dive, we're tackling that invisible wall and uh, what might be behind it. Right. We're diving deep into smart but stuck. Emotions in Teens and Adults with ADHD by Thomas E. Brown. Great book. And before you think ADHD, that's not me. Hold on. This book. It's not about checking off symptoms. It's more about those invisible struggles so many of us face, especially when it comes to, well, emotions. Yeah, what's fascinating about this book is that it really digs into a side of ADHD that people don't always talk about. Right. Yeah, we hear a lot about the focus issues, the hyperactivity. But what about the, uh, the emotional roller coaster that can come along with it? Yeah, it's like everyone just assumes if you've got this Ferrari brain, you're automatically winning the race. Exactly. But what if what if you don't even know how to steer the darn thing, right? Right, right. And that's what Brown gets into. And to make it real, he uses all these stories of his patients, like uh, like Mike. Yeah. And, and just imagine, okay, you're a college student, you're getting labeled immature because you're, you know, failing classes, smoking a lot of weed, but underneath it all, yeah. you're, you're drowning in this, like, social anxiety in mike's story it's so powerful because it shows how quickly we judge behavior without actually understanding the why behind it yeah this whole willpower assumption the idea that people with adhd could just try harder it just completely misses the mark it's like it's like blaming someone for having cholera back when nobody knew what even caused it you know Except, think, yeah. and brown makes that analogy in the book and it is so spot on it is because adhd it's not about a lack of willpower it's it's that the brain is literally wired differently, especially when we're talking about executive functions. And that's where the the emotional piece comes in. Okay. Because you see, executive functions, they're like they're like our brain's management team, right? Sure, okay. They help us plan, organize, regulate those emotions, mm -hmm. and um, and hold on to information in our working memory. Uh huh. But with ADHD, it's like that team's maybe they're using outdated software. Okay. Or, or maybe they're just short-staffed, you know? Okay, so working memory, I mean, you know that feeling when you're trying to remember a phone number and it just, oosh, slips away. Okay. Imagine that feeling, but it's like amplified. Right. Like you're trying to juggle these slippery fish and everyone's yelling at you at the same time. Yeah. That's kind of, that's got to be a glimpse into what those working memory challenges can feel like, especially with ADHD. Absolutely. And, and Brown argues that these challenges, they make emotions feel so much bigger, so much more all-consuming. Right. Especially for someone like Mike, who's already dealing with this, like, intense social anxiety. Exactly. And his working memory struggles, it meant those anxious thoughts could just take over so easily. Wow. Crowding out logic, making it really hard to think clearly. Right. And when your emotions feel that intense, it's only natural to look for ways to escape that discomfort. Yeah. And, and in Mike's case, it was weed. But for others, it might be video games, social media, you know, any form of instant gratification. Yeah, it's like anything to get a break from that feeling. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. And that's where I think the idea of being smart but stuck really hits home. Yeah. It's like you have all this potential. Right. But you're constantly tripping over these invisible hurdles that other people don't even seem to notice, are there? It really is. It's like having a, you know, a Ferrari engine, but uh, with bicycle brakes. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're raring to go, but then controlling that power, especially when we talk about emotions, that's that's the real challenge. And it's not even just like what you feel, it's how you react to it, too. Yes. And Brown talks about this thing, the brain's gating mechanism for emotions, right? So how it filters and manages our emotional responses. Right. And he's saying that in ADHD, this gating, it can get, well, kind of wonky. Yeah, it's like imagine a thermostat, but it's stuck. Okay. It's either scorching hot or freezing cold, and there's just no in-between. Oh, wow. And for someone with ADHD, those emotional highs and lows, yeah. they can be really extreme yeah, yeah and that's that's why understanding those little nuances is so important right yeah. because just putting a band-aid on the symptoms right that's not gonna fix the the underlying issue it's like it's like taking painkillers when you have a broken leg exactly like yeah you're masking the pain for a minute but you're not actually you know dealing with the root cause and the healing and speaking of root causes, remember how Mike was so resistant to medication at first? Oh, yeah. Even his dad was comparing it to, like, steroids. Right? Yes, it's a common misconception, unfortunately. Yeah. But what's interesting about Mike's story is that he actually does find success with medication. Okay. But, 
and this is key, it's when it's combined with therapy. Oh, right? yes, therapy yes. that specifically addresses that social anxiety he's dealing with. So it's like he finally gets the Ferrari tuned up. Yeah. But then he realizes, oh, I also need some driving lessons if I actually want to handle this thing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's not one size fits all, right? Right. And that's where these tailored strategies are so important. It really is. And that's a huge takeaway from the book, I think, that treatment needs to be individualized. Absolutely. Medication can be life-changing for some people. For sure. But for a lot of people, therapy, especially therapy that really digs into those emotional roots, is it's essential. Absolutely. Okay, so let's let's talk about Karen, another one of Brown's patients. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever felt that that pressure to succeed, you know, even if it means like sacrificing your own well-being to do it? Oh, absolutely. Because that's Karen's story. Yeah. In a nutshell. Yeah, she starts college. She's determined to make her family proud, right? Right. But then she experiences this like crippling anxiety just trying to even like enter one of her required classes. Wow. And because of the ADHD, that fear of disappointing her parents, it just gets amplified. Oh, wow. And she ends up avoiding the class altogether. Oh, no. Which then, of course, just leads to more guilt and shame. Oh, it's like a vicious cycle. Exactly. And it just highlights how, you know, with ADHD, everyday anxieties can become these, like, insurmountable obstacles. Absolutely. And that tendency to avoid discomfort, it can show up in different ways, yeah. right? It's like hopelessness or seeking escape through things like video games. Right, right, totally. You know, it's like that that feeling of relief when you finally give in and check your phone after you've been trying to focus on work for an hour. Oh, yeah. But, you know, Brown points out constantly seeking that escape, hmm. it can actually become a way of avoiding those deeper emotional challenges. Oh. And we see this with James, another patient, a brilliant student, but he just gets paralyzed by his writing assignments. Oh, no. But then he can spend hours, we're talking hours, immersed in these violent video games. It's like he's running a marathon in this, like, virtual world. Right. But can't even get to the starting line in the real one. And what Brown does so well is he connects that, you know, for James, the gaming isn't just laziness. Okay. It's about emotional regulation. He's he's trying to find that sense of control, that mastery, yeah. in a world where he constantly feels overwhelmed. It's like he found this outlet where all those executive function challenges, they don't hold him back the same way. Exactly. And and that reminds me, actually, of what you are saying earlier about individualized support being so important. Yes, absolutely. Because, I mean... It's crucial. Yeah, just like it, medication isn't the answer for everyone. Right. Neither is, you know, the same approach to therapy or accommodations. Right. One size does not fit all. Right. And this is where Brown talks about the importance of things like 504 plans. Yes. Which, for listeners who don't know, these are plans that provide specific accommodations at school. Right. To help students with disabilities succeed. Exactly. And can you give us an example of what that might look like? In real life. Yeah, I mean, what kind of stuff are we talking about? So Brown talks about a student, Sue, who mm -hmm. just, she really struggled in school. Okay. Until she got a 504 plan. Okay. And it gave her things like extra time on tests, preferential seating, so away from distractions. Oh, wow. And even access to a study skills teacher. Oh, that's great. And these, you know, these adjustments, they allowed her to actually tap into her true potential. Wow. Proving that sometimes the smallest tweaks can make a huge difference. Wow. That's incredible. It's like, you know, finding the right pair of glasses after years of just seeing the world all blurry. Yeah. Yeah. And then eat. suddenly things just click into focus and you realize, wow, this is what I'm capable of. It is. And that's that's what I find so inspiring about this book. You know, mm -hmm. smart but stuck. It's it doesn't frame ADHD as this life sentence. It's not about, you know, slapping a label on anyone. It's about understanding, right? And then finding the right tools, the right support to actually thrive. Yeah, and what I love is that it's not just, you know, offering hope for people with ADHD. It's mm. like it gives all of us a, a new lens to look at ourselves yes. and each I other with a little more compassion. Absolutely. Because who hasn't felt stuck at some point? Right, exactly. We've all had those moments where, like, our emotions just hijack everything. Oh, totally. You know, we procrastinate, we get overwhelmed, we just want to escape. Yeah. And and I think that's Brown's most powerful message, honestly. You know, whether you have ADHD or not, 
this book can help you understand yourself better. Absolutely. Understand your emotions, those those invisible struggles we all deal with. Totally. It's like he's giving us this like backstage pass to how our brains actually work. Yeah. Yeah. You know, those executive functions, the emotional gating, all that stuff. Exactly. And then once you can see those mechanisms at play in yourself and other people, it's like this light bulb moment. Totally. And suddenly all those judgments we place on ourselves, on others, oh, they're lazy or irresponsible or they're not trying hard enough. Right, right. They start to fade away and, and they're replaced with this like more compassionate understanding. Yeah, you realize everyone's fighting their own battles. That's We've true. all got our own stuff. We do. It's like Brown saying, hey, let's just, you know, cut ourselves a little slack. Exactly. We're all just out here trying our best with the with the brains we've got. Exactly. And and with a little bit of self-awareness. Yeah. The right support. The willingness to try new things. We can move from stuck to support it. I love that. From from just surviving to really thriving. So good. Yeah. So so if you're listening to this and something's resonated with you, if yeah. you're feeling seen yes. or maybe inspired to see yourself or someone you love in a new light. Absolutely. I highly recommend checking out Smart But Stuck. It's one of those books that really sticks with you. You know, oh, yeah. it sparks those aha moments, those nudges you towards like, you know, yeah. deeper self-compassion, deeper understanding. Totally. It's, it's really good. It's a true deep dive, I think, into into what it means to be human, it you is. know, to struggle, to grow and then ultimately to embrace our own, you know, unique brilliance. Beautifully said. Oh. Yeah. And, and on that note, I think we'll leave you with, with Brown's challenge, you know. Okay. What hidden strengths, what overlooked emotional patterns oh. might you discover if you if you dare to take a closer look? I love that. Yeah, take a look in the mirror, folks. There you go. What do you see? All right, everyone. Well, thanks for joining us on this deep dive. It's been a pleasure. It has. And uh, to all our listeners out there, happy exploring. Happy exploring.